much for Samantha. You guys been into Josh, um, we just started with Hackathon Labs Monday, so uh, just talk with kind of jump around between my old projects and my new ones. But um, overall, that's about, uh, basically mesh networking Android. Go uh, line. Banging on code for about 12 years now. A lot of it has been classified. I got, I got really tired of working inside Faraday cages, especially doing mobile. So I left. Um, also, kind of got bad about or tired of writing my own code. Um, not that I still don't, but I think it would be more fun to like break other people's code than to write my own pet code. So I'm kind of like shifting how I do things. In general, I really like to break. Um, even more than that, I like to repurpose and embed things. I dig soldering, and uh, there's my contact info. So, the SPAN project that I'm going to talk about was originally a MITRE research project. Um, we since open sourced it. The main point of the project was to make sure, and I'll, I'll get into it again in a little bit, but basically, our main customer was the EPNR people, Emergency Preparedness and Response. The other people on the team that are still actively working on it with a paycheck for it are Jeff Robel, which took over my lead developer role, um, and then Nick and all of them. So I am currently working on this project, but just in the open source community. Did you okay. Mitre? I left MITRE last week. <laughs> Real quick, I'll talk about what is a man A, uh, what do I care, uh, what span is in general. Um, We'll finally get a little technical, and then maybe five minute mark if I don't run out of time like we did at DEF CON. I'll talk about terrorists and baseball, which is always fun. Um, too long, didn't read. Uh, all the code's online at GitHub. Uh, if that's too hard to remember, oh my god, ponies. Um, pretty much redirects that. So, mesh networking in general. Um, there's a math geek, so. I look at everything as graph theory, and it's kind of exactly not like graph theory. Um, <laughs> you know those shiny little gadgets, right? And so instead of just a nice little dot that doesn't move, you've got these dots that both move around a bunch and run out of battery really quick, which um, makes routing difficult. Um, we also have like all the vertices, so right? like all your routes uh, are really unstable and they've got really arbitrary signal strength and whatnot. And the picks are way uglier, so um, I really like the lightning bolts, though. <laughs> so that's kind of the overall problem space. Um, why? Especially the past five years, we've seen a lot more press on like things break and it really, really sucks. So like Fukushima happened, all the cell network just went down. It was like like viral YouTube videos, like people trying to call their family, like, "Hey, I'm okay," but you no know, cell signal. Um, Haiti. The actual cell network survived in Haiti until all the volunteers went down there to help, and then everyone pulled out their shiny iPhone and killed the cell network. Um, so it was like, everyone was trying to help, and now they came in to help, and they killed their own comms. Um, Katrina, kind of the same thing. So natural disaster-wise, we need a backup plan because we just use cell too much. Um, Arab Springs, kind of the other thing where governments, other entities can just flip a switch, and now you have no cell network or you have no internet. I don't really love that, so the mesh is also a really good way to bypass that. Um, and then also just, I don't know, uh, normal cell service, pick your cell manufacturer and your service provider. No one seems to love the internet they get from it. Uh, Meshing is a good way to get around that. Uh, in general, my mentality is physical infrastructure is prone to failure. I mean, if it's tacked up on a tower or it's anywhere else, I mean, it can be broken, right? Single point of failure sucks, don't do it. But that's how our whole infrastructure is built. So not only can it break, but it can also like single point of speed. That's not great either. Um, so I like the idea of like a headless network. I mean, something where it's completely headless. You can cut it in half, and it just it's still live. It still lives. Um, but it comes with some horrible routing mechanics. So the span project. Uh, I started looking in academia. There was a couple, probably like 10 to 12 projects that had tried to do mesh networking over the past five years. Um, they all kind of started and went, whoa, this is really hard, and quit. Uh, 
as academia tends to do. So we went, ooh, that's really hard. It looks like good software engineering. We can create a nice generalized framework that then people can plug and play to actually get to the hard stuff. Like, let's generify the easy stuff so people can actually tackle the hard problem. Um, so we created the smartphone ad hoc networking or SPARE project. Um, in general, it is a software, plug and play software framework that you can plug in all these different components with the actual getting the mesh on a phone is now taken care of. Um, the kind of sexy thing we did was implement a transparent proxy, which I'll talk about right now. Um, so this little blue line right here is our proxy. The unique thing about it is any of the other projects we've seen, like, yeah, they get mesh networking working on a phone, but all the apps that need to run on the mesh have to be written for the mesh. Um, so things like Twitter and Facebook just don't work. Where we're injecting a transparent proxy to like grab all of the networking code that's running on the Android device. So any app that you would normally use, like Twitter, um, we intercept at this transparent proxy layer and it doesn't have to be rewritten for the mesh. As long as there's one machine on the mesh that is bridging to the internet, Twitter still works for you. Given that we can chain, you know, chain phones two or three miles down a stretch, you can basically chain Twitter to work anywhere your mesh is still connected. Which is just kind of cool because it, it doesn't muck with the user experience at all. You don't have to be some lead god to be able to do it. I mean, just pull your phone out of your pocket and it still works. So, um, here's our architecture in general. Uh, most of this looks exactly like the. OSI <coughs> stack for Android because that's what we based all off of. And actually, most of it is. Um, and again, there right above IP tables is a nice blue transparent proxy, um, so we can catch anything at all. The other things that are worthwhile, the actual hard problems that we'll get to in mesh networking, is these routing protocols right here. Um, you have a lot of devices moving around. I mean, things like keeping routes is hard. Um, so we try to make a plug and play so you can actually just do research and figure out the best way to do routes. Um, which we'll get to. So problems that shouldn't be hard. This, these are the problems that t seem to have broken most other projects out there. Um, the first is just the Wi-Fi chips, right? Um, as a hardware geek, I immediately I open a phone like, ooh, what chips is it? So you've got this Broadcom 3229. Uh, it's in almost all of the Samsung phones that are, <coughs> except for the newest versions. Um, it's in the Windows Lumina 900, the like Windows 7.5 flagship phone. Um, older iPhones used it up until really recently, actually. Uh, the Transformer Prime uses it, which is a nice tab. Um, Broadcom then upped their game with the 4330. It's in the newer Samsung products, um, and also in all the iPhones except for the 5. Actually, I think we had vice versa with the S2 and the uh, Galaxy Nexus. I think the Galaxy Nexus is 4330, and the Galaxy S2 is 4330. They claim it is, but if you take it apart yeah. and actually look at the, the board, um, we, we had like 20 of them, and they seem to do a hardware revision. Because yeah. um, I, I found them with both. It really, really surprised me. Interesting. Um, yeah, because I'll get into a headache that we have. To cross compile the drivers between 4329 and 4330, isn't it relatively easy compared to doing most other things? Yeah, relatively? Can you repeat um, the question? Oh, yeah. So we were just talking the uh, Galaxy Nexus basically switched Broadcom chips mid manufacture. So you can actually, if you open your phone up, you can see both. Um, or not both, it's in the phone. But I mean, randomly you'll have one of the other chips and the question is the drivers. Um, and they, they tend to work. Um, have you seen the new drivers that were announced on like Slashdot and the, what's that hacking site? They have support for uh, monitor mode and uh, frame injection for the 4329, but not necessarily 4330. Huh. No, I have not. And they have it working on the Galaxy, or the Galaxy S and the S2. I'll have to look at that. Yeah. We should chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they were talking about compiling between the 4329 and 4330. Mainly what I've seen is, is um, 
on the phones, even if they've got, especially with that one, they tend to just have the 4329 driver running, yeah. um, even if the 30 is in there. It's just kind of, which puts it in a weird mode, which is right. I'll, I'll actually get to. Um, <laughs> so, um, Motorola Razor has the TI chip. Uh, I will say right now, I gave up on that chip. It just kicked my ass. Um, Qualcomm basically hits a ton of Android phones that Broadcom's not in. Uh, you can pretty much pick up a phone, and if it's not Broadcom, it's going to be Qualcomm. Um, the Marata, which is in the iPhone 5, um, I haven't got my hands on one yet. I can't wait. I have a feeling that it's probably just a rebranded different chip, um, but maybe not. I, I'll be able to poke at it Monday. Um, so, tweaking mesh code to work with all the different hardware instances is a big headache. Um, that was one of the goals of Spam. It's like, let's generify this so no one has to know the subtle differences between the Broadcom chips. Like, you shouldn't care. You're mucking with routing protocols. Um, so we attempted to solve that as much as we can. Um, the second thing that really shouldn't be hard that's really frustrating is not only every vendor, so like Samsung does it, Motorola does it, um, they muck with the open source project, that's cool. Um, they don't always open source it, that's also okay and understandable, but sometimes they just do things that I, I don't get. Um, so both the manufacturers and the service providers tend to muck, muck with things, so like even a Samsung device just on different carriers, oh, Act completely different. I mean, even if you're just not using the cell chip at all, like you don't ever touch the base band, the phones act different, which is awkward. Um, so, can we make it work on your phone? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, we need to keep the Wi-Fi chip out of management. So, when your phone opens up originally, it's like scanning for wireless networks. Ooh, I want to pick that one. Um, we don't want you to ever lock on and pick one. Like as long as you don't lock on and pick one, you're still in open mode. And I love it because now we can mesh and randomly. Oh, I was going to say, have you looked at the Wi Fi Direct? We have. For this? Um, yeah. Uh, quite a bit. A lot of our codes actually kind of pulled from that. Um, so, uh, most, well, all the Broadcom chips, we seem to be able to lock out of manage mode, like that TI chip. I can get it out, and then within like seven seconds, it jumps back in. And I have no idea where it's doing. Um, I've just, I've, I've banged on it like, Software level, kernel level, like driver level, and then like you know, uh, gotten the say layout and like actually like, hooked up to the chip. I have no freaking clue what is doing that, but it's kicked my ass. Um, so the only other thing we need, other than to be able to keep out of managed mode, is that the kernel needs wireless extensions um, support. Half the Samsung devices, which were kind of our primary test things, just had them by default. The other ones we had to compile into the kernel. Kernel. Um, if you need help with that, which seems to be all of the open source questions that we deal with, 90% are how the hell do I compile a kernel? So um, the GitHub repo already has the stock kernels for all, all the phones we've touched, uh, if you just want to pull them down and play with them. But also, we've got a Google Groups that goes into great detail on exactly what you need for, you know, I have phone X with carrier Y uh, in country Z. So, in short, um, if you have any device that can run Java and C, and you can get kernel level access, um, and it has a Wi-Fi card that you can kind of muck with, then you're pretty much set for the mesh. So, Android works. Um, iOS should, in theory, it should work. I've never had the time to actually bank it out, but um, I'll go into it. It's actually easier on iPhones. Um, Arduino works, we got that played with. Uh, Linux, we did a lot of our development on gum sticks, so um, pretty much anything that you can control, you can make join the mesh. Um, those are the problems that we tried to generify so people can actually tackle these hard problems. Um, routing. Routing is painful because you've got all these devices moving, they're running out of batteries. Um, we have some suggestions. Uh, the academic team is continuing down that path. There's a lot of pseudo-academic, pseudo-sponsored around the world projects that are also mucking with routing. Um, Batman is really awesome. Uh, the Byzantium guys in Germany are really, really cool, and I'm hoping to talk to them soon. Uh, 
they're actually trying to do a standards committee for how to do routing, um, which is awkward. So uh, one of the other problems with MANA in general is just network scale. Like getting 10 to 20 devices to talk together, not really hard. Getting 10 or 20,000 devices to talk together, hard. Um, power consumption, I mean, basically, you've got your phone, you've got the Wi-Fi chip locked into a basically power eating mode because you're constantly scanning. So you're constantly scanning, you're constantly sending out hello packets and pings and whatnot. Um, it just eats your battery. Uh, I've started working on some new routing protocols that solely just try to even the battery burn across the whole network, which is great, but they require more packets to go out over the network, uh, which eats battery, it's counter, counterproductive. Um, automatic configuration, so how do I automatically join or leave a mesh? Especially if you're doing security and you've got like shared keys and whatnot. Like, how do you do that if you want to have an open thing that anyone can just jump into? Because um, that's, that's the deal that you want as many phones as possible, even if you don't trust them all. So you're basically, you're constantly in a conundrum of wanting to use Starbucks Wi-Fi, but wanting to be secure at the same time. Um, insecurity. So a handful of the problems that we hit that I just thought would be fun to talk about. Um, we want to save battery life. Um, so does Android. And Android really, really, one of the interesting things they do um, at the network and kernel level is when the screen goes off, they receive no UDP packets. Like the Wi-Fi chip's like, nah, I don't want this anymore. Um, that sucks for us, because we're like using UDP packets to keep the, the whole network alive. Um, so we did what a lot of people try to do at first, which is grab wake lock. Um, so we grab wake lock, uh, and then we just dim the screen almost all the way down ourselves. Uh, that worked. It was really, really ugly. And still eight batteries more than you would want to. Um, then we found this thing, which was really awesome, because it basically says, don't trash UDP packets. Um, re recompile the kernel, and you're golden. Uh, securing a mesh, um, that's my time. Um, Serval's kind of the leader right now. Uh, unless I'm lying, they're out of Australia. They've got a really cool way of using um, public key as the device address. So, you know, you've got no DHCP, um, or yeah, you've got you've got no server to basically automatically assign addresses. You've got to figure out how to do that on your own for each phone that's joining. Um, they use whatever public key that the phone creates is basically its address. It's a really awesome way to be able to do stuff, um, but it's not horribly secure um, for other reasons. So. We wanted to use the MAC address to automatically generate IPv6 addresses. That's cool, but we can't also have that as the public key, because then how do we, I mean, you can't go from public back to private, right? I can't figure out what the private key should be. Um, so it breaks the server all paradigm. Um, and then the other big issue that we've been mucking with in the past, I don't know, six months has just been, okay, I've got keys. Uh, how do I transfer them around the network in a secure fashion? Like, I may be wanting to have my phone jump network all the way to the back of the room and secure talk to you. How do we originally do that handshake if I don't trust anyone in this room? That's been painful. Yeah, on plates across some untrusted nodes. So we, we've, we do have VPN working across uh, the mesh. I mean, if we manually configure all the keys and whatnot, we can't do all enclaves. We can also do enclaves over internet bridge. So you know, we're hijacking the Wi-Fi chip. I can bridge that connection with the cell, the baseband. Um, and I can actually jump like two enclaved meshes and have basically a VPN tunnel between them. Um, so as far as like secure comps, that's that's pretty good. Um, and then the odd problem. So uh, we were testing with this guy, um, which was supposed to have the 29. and. It didn't, and I finally just got frustrated and took a spudger to it and opened it up and had the 30. Um, so we threw about 10 guys up on the network, and they all worked great. Um, both, we, so we've got 10 Epic, uh, Epic Touch 4Gs and 10 Samsung Galaxy Nexus phones. Um, so 20 devices on the network. At like 19, um, they worked great. At 20, all the Galaxy Nexus is just like disappeared, like no longer there. 
um, finally dug down and figured out one guy's running at like 20 megahertz and the other one's at 30, so they create this like really jacked up white noise and it actually filters out all of the Galaxy Nexus data. Um, just not something you would think from the same piece of hardware. Um, and it, it, we got a, another shipment of phones in and it never happened again. So it was, uh, could never figure out why. We could figure out how to like change the voltage on the chip, um, but we could never actually get those phones reliably commingling with other phones on the net. Um, real quick, iOS. Um, unlike Android, where you got to jack with a bunch of things, iOS, you can just literally push a configuration utility to it. Um, you can hijack both the Wi-Fi to say, you know, always use this mesh, always use your mesh. And you can also jack the APN to say, always use the mesh, um, which means all of your data from the phone, it's already got the proxy in there. So um, at a theoretical level, it should actually be easier. There's other issues with iOS. Um, so my quick story. Uh, we started this and bought a bunch of phones. And people are like, cool, you got a bunch of phones. We want to do a mesh here. Um, so someone was like, uh, there's going to be like 65,000 people in Kansas City for the All-Star game. Do you all want to do a mesh? Hey, hell yeah. Um, so we showed up, and there's our wonderful view from across the highway. Um, the goal was to hand phones out to like all the PD that were doing patrols and whatnot, because there's so many. So much data there. Or, there's so many people there on their phones. So like 65,000 people in a dense situation. Um, you know, the cell networks just, well, like it was yesterday, they just like die, right? Um, so we get there. Um, this is just what my typical hotel room looks like. Uh, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So like charging like 60 phones in a hotel room really, really sucks. Um, and then charging extended batteries also really, really sucks. Um, as an aside, if you're ever trying to do this, um, why? But, you know, secondly, 24-port um, hubs, make sure you see how much amperage they actually put out in all 24 ports, because <laughs> these charge for like two days, and all that we're really doing is like, one battery would get like 5% charge, and then drain to try to do the rest of the batteries, because like, there was just no, no charge. Um, so, once we figured that out, we ended up like, getting two extra hotel rooms to lead to charge phones, which is really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it works. Um, so anyway, we're trying to give them the PD, and the guys are like walking around and whatnot. Um, and the mesh that we created, yeah, it's, I mean, it's hijacking Wi-Fi chips. You have to be about 100, 150 feet away from each other. Um, and the PD we're doing way too large of a perimeter. So engineer, like, dude, there's trees. We've got duct tape. Let's duct tape phones to trees. Um, <laughs> seems legit, right? Uh, the snipers that are kind of like scanning the whole thing, like looking for terrorists, don't really love like random guys with ponytails like crawling up in trees and like duct taping electronics. <laughs> Not cool. Um, uh, we got yelled at so much. Um, apparently out of like, at the, at the game there was like 10 suspicious activity reports, like eight of them were me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So um, I think I'm pretty much out of time. So uh, again, there's the links. Uh, please, please, please chat uh, if you're interested in this type of stuff. Uh, yep, yeah, and that's it. And then there's links to all the other projects that are open source that we uh, work with. Um, the Wi-Fi tether stuff was really, really, really helpful as a starting point. Okay. I think that's it. Questions? Yes, I've, I've been talking to you. There's an app called Open Garden that I've asked them about, but uh, I haven't tried it yet. Is it good? Um, the Open Garden, Garden stuff is really hip for what it does, but it's basically, uh, I hope you not be offensive by this, it's basically glorified tether. Yeah. Which is kind of not what we want to do. I mean, it's like a good story. I had a couple of really long con email conversations with the guys. That's a really cool thing. That's a really cool thing. It was supposed to fly out. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the phone. Yeah. 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 Yeah.